The Young Turks brought to you by Carbonite Online Backup. The Patriot Act was up for renewal for four years, and it passed very easily. A lot of Democrats voted for it. I know during the Bush years, the Patriot Act was unacceptable to a lot of Democrats. All of a sudden, under a Democratic president, it was incredibly acceptable. In fact, uh, here's a Democrat uh, from uh, 2008. I believe this guy's name is Barack Obama. Here's what he said. Uh, there is no reason we cannot fight terrorism while maintaining our civil liberties. As president, Barack Obama would revisit the Patriot Act to ensure that there is real and robust oversight of tools like national security letters, sneak and peek searches, and the use of material witness provision. That was in a position paper that he put uh, out in 2008, his campaign did. Uh, was there a serious look at national security letters, sneak and peek searches, etc.? Nope. No revisions. Exactly the same. That same administration, well, or it, at the time it was a campaign, now it's an administration, put out this uh, quote at the end of last week. Senior administration official, quote, failure to pass this legislation with sufficient time for the president to sign it before it expires at midnight on Thursday posed a significant risk to the U.S. national security. The bottom line is that if these provisions are allowed to lapse, even temporarily, the nation will be less safe. Sounds just like President George W. Bush. So, Democrats, of course, go along with uh, their president, and they sign into law for four years the same exact problems that we had before. By the way, what were those problems? There are roving wiretaps. I'll give you three of the main ones. Uh, lone wolf investigations and access to business records. Now, what does that mean? What it says is, hey, you know what? I don't need probable cause anymore. I don't need a warrant. There's a national security issue at hand here. So I'm going to target some folks and we're going to do roving wiretaps of them, right? So if they go to their phone, I'm going to check that. If they go to their cell phone, I'm going to get that. If they go to their phone at work, I'm going to get that. If they email from home or work, I'm going to get that. I'm going to get it all, right? Now, in the past, you would need a specific warrant for a specific phone or computer, etc. Now, I could sign on for a roving wiretap as long as you get a warrant and say, hey, look, we think this guy is dangerous. Here's our evidence why. You show a judge, and the judge goes, okay, makes sense. Go collect information on them. That's how the system is supposed to work. Now, you don't need a warrant. Well, the government just decided you were dangerous, so they put a roving wiretap on you and get every single email, phone call you ever made, okay? The business records provision, by the way, the lone wolf provision means, uh, you know what, we don't really have anything connecting him to any other terrorist, but we think he's dangerous. Again, if you had probable cause and you showed just a tiny little bit of evidence saying, hey, this is why we're concerned about that guy, you go get a warrant. It's the easiest thing in the world. The FISA court almost always gives you the warrant, right? But they don't want to do that because they want to wiretap all of us, right? They want to have the, at least the ability to wiretap all of us. And in fact, based on other uh, previous reporting, they do. It's all sitting in records. The question is, do they go out and access it whenever they want on particular individuals? The guy who created that program uh, at the National Security Agency then retired and said, apologize to the country and said, I'm so sorry. This is not how it was intended. It was not supposed to be used against Americans. And now is the NSA using it against Americans? Absolutely. Okay. And then the business records is, well, I'm not satisfied just getting all the information that you have out in the public that I can gather in some way. Now, it's not your phone calls and your emails aren't supposed to be public, but they can grab it, right, by using AT&T and some of the other, you know, telecoms to give them the information. So, the business records is they go to your company or they go to your doctor and go, I wrote up a letter, it's called a national security letter, I didn't get a judge for anything on it or anybody to look at it, and I want all of his records. And they have to give them to him. Basically, that means the Fourth Amendment no longer exists. You, there is no uh, you know, protection against unreasonable searches and seizures, it's gone. Remember, Barack Obama was a constitutional law professor. What a joke! And what did he do? No protections against any of this. They just repassed the Patriot Act for four long years. All right, now if you think that's bad, Ron Wyden, senator from Oregon, says, you don't know the half. There is a provision, apparently, that the federal government is using that keeps what they're really doing with the Patriot Act secret from Congress and the public. Now, Wyden says, wait a minute, I'm a senator. You're telling me the executive branch is interpreting this law in a way that we don't even know? And they say they have the right to do it just because they're the executive branch? He said, that's outrageous. And we know they're doing it 
because Senator Wyden says they're doing it, we just don't know what it is. Now, the stuff we already know that's public record is outrageous. So my God, what is a secret program? And what the hell are they doing with that program? And where did they get authorization from it? They got authorization on the Patriot Act. That was outrageous. I just told you about it. But they don't have authorization for the secret application of the Patriot Act. Look, this isn't a hypothesis. You've got a United States senator saying this. And he's waving red flags going, watch out, watch out. They're using this in a way that's totally unauthorized. We elected a guy for change? What was the change? That we get spied on more? <laughs> that our civil liberties get crushed more? Where the hell's the change? You think that's bad, it gets worse. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security is conducting tests on a program called Future Attribute Screening Technology, FAST for short. Raw stories reporting this. I, I'm, Nature Magazine reported, I'm shocked by it. I almost literally cannot believe it. It is a program that is supposed to judge our intent for future crimes. That's it. <laughs> I mean, we're officially in science fiction. I mean, this is almost beyond Orwell. It's a Tom Cruise movie. They are trying to judge, quote, your malintent. <laughs> now, comically, Department of Homeland Security claims that they know it works 70% of the time. Where did they get that information? What, they cost 70% of the terrorists? When? When did you catch a terrorist using this program? And wh what's the three terrorists you missed out of 10? What a joke. What experiments did you run that you get that number? T absurd. So now they say, they have, don't worry, in, back in 2008, they did a privacy impact assessment. And uh, the technology uh, is supposed to measure people who intend to cause harm. They are looking for uh, physiological properties such as heart rate, eye movement, which can be used to infer a person's current mindset. This is what our government is doing? We've lost, man. This, is, this isn't the democracy. This isn't the United States of America. We, because we are apparently, theoretically, in a panic over terrorism, what they're going to do from their bunker in Abbottabad, we've given away our rights. We've turned this into a police state. You think that's bad? It continues to get worse and worse. There's a new article in Wall Street Journal today saying that the United States government reserves the right to take military action against a cyber attack. Here is one unnamed military official according to the Wall Street Journal. Quote, if you shut down our power grid, maybe we will put a missile down one of your smokestacks. Now you think, okay, look. I think that those cyber attacks can cause tremendous harm, right? And I get, of course, that the Pentagon is concerned about it, not just for uh, regular business and how much money it's going to cost, but what it can do in terms of national security, et cetera. I understand all that. And I think people take cyber attacks way too lightly, and I think they do cost millions upon millions of dollars. But we don't get to drop a bomb on their head. Now, is it going to get stretched to beyond the military? Oh, of course it's already stretched. They say, well, Lockheed Martin, a private corporation, does a lot of defense work. So if you hack into Lockheed Martin, well, then we could bomb you as well. You think they're not going to stretch that to other corporations? You think they're going to ask questions outside the country? Oh, who did we, you know, in the words of this guy, uh, put a missile down uh, their smokestack? This is beyond, you think that it's going to be just the terrorists who are cyber attacking us? Come on, man, don't tell me you're that foolish and naive. It starts that way, and then where does it go? Well, there was a cyber attack from WikiLeaks who happened to get sensitive national security information, and since they got that information and could be giving it to an enemy of the state or releasing it to the public where enemies of the state would see it, well, we're going to call that a cyber attack and order up a couple of drones. We have slipped into a disastrous police state. And nobody looks like they're getting out in front of this at all to stop it. Where are the Democrats? Ha! <laughs> Missing an action. What action? They're nowhere to be found. Well, the genius of this whole military industrial complex was to put President Obama in charge so the Democrats would shut up. They said, what? It's a Democratic president. The guy who we claimed had the most liberal record in the Senate when he was running for president, He's the one that says we should do all of this. We should judge your malintent and do uh, actual military against cyber uh, attacks. And, and, you know, and that we should take away your rights to privacy and do warrantless searches on you. 
Well, you can't disagree with Democratic President Obama, can you? And of course, the Republicans love it. And here we are. Disaster on top of disaster. Eventually, you're going to have a computer disaster, your computer is going to crash, and you're going to lose all your files. But with Carbonite Online Backup, you don't have to worry about any of that because it automatically saves your files off-site. You can access all of your backed up files from any computer remotely, or if you want, you can also access your files through an iPhone or Blackberry with Carbonite's awesome free app. Carbonite costs just $55 a year for unlimited backup for your PC or Mac. Think about it, that's less than $5 a month. Get a free trial at Carbonite.com by using the promo code TYT and you also get two months free if you decide to buy.